Let's see. Back with the sonar, and this is the most food driven Great Dane I've ever seen. And if you said it's because you took everything you knew and applied it, yeah, that's probably it. And I think you do have to have a specific approach. If you said, well, I don't have any specific, I just approach every dog like a dog, well, you're going to get in trouble. You need to understand that. Again, if your job was judging ball drive and you continually made mistakes, you'd be out of a job. If your job is identifying and developing food drive and companion animals, well, you need to be more specific about that and understand dogs with high food drive or I don't care how stressed they are, they're going to eat or they're not even the stress type so they can eat all the time. Or there are dogs as a breed that are not driven by food and as crazy as it sounds as big as these dogs are they're not food driven oh, i call nina right now and say what would thor gets nervous does he eat no you can't force them to eat when they're nervous and that's why they do get nervous and if you said well what's the chemical opposite of nervous it is i suppose excitement anticipation of something good so that's going to be more easily tapped into using food drive. Yeah, I know. I've never seen anything like her. I have never, ever seen anything like her. She loves all food. She races me from platform to platform. Oh, she's awful. All right, so it is not a handicap, though, because I don't need to tell you. I'm not going to use any words. So sure. Hang on, I might need to move this camera. Hang on. Yeah, I guess it's gonna get it's gonna get too hot. Okay. In fact, here we can just go out here. Let's go out here. So, because her eyes are not very good. Oh, her little eyes can't see very good. notes about that one sometime right now. She said, what note are you making? Yeah. She's certainly not. Yeah. Oh, she's going to make sure. She's second guessing everything. If you said, what, what is not a successful methodology? A forcing. Forcing. If you said, well, it's completely ineffective. <laughs> it's completely ineffective unless your handler is a 6'6 six, six Navy SEAL that's, you know, fought the Taliban. Oh, that one guy, uh, whatever his name was. Oh, James Ham. <laughs> yeah, he's no pet dog trainer. Here's an idea, James. Get into Shutson or something. You know what I mean? Am I wrong, Chelsea? You're, you're no companion dog trainer. As you stated, you fought the Taliban. So you're better off doing protection. You're better off being, going and learning how to be a help. Yeah. When you don't know what a little peekaboo yelping is. Yeah, that's 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 you got the thing, the dial, James. The dial's too high. Oh, look, some of my boxes arrived. Somehow they slipped in here. So yeah, this dog is enormous. Yay! And it's very very imprinted to any platform. It's it's generalized. Yay. Yay. Yay! Yay! And she will apparently just pick up anything. Yay. Yeah, now hey, I can see it, Charles. Now one like this would come in handy. Oh, this is this is our new training. It's called Amazon Prime Training. Yeah, it can pick up boxes as high uh, as heavy as 30 pounds and bring them to your house. <laughs> How's that one? Yeah, anything over 30 pounds, you're going to need two of them. But yeah, we can arrange that too. Yeah, no, two of them, and then we get a special thing. They're able to carry it in their mouth, drag it along. We 
Those are, you know, like Indians where they used to have to pull somebody that was injured behind a horse. Yeah, kind of like that. Holy cannoli. Luckily she can't hear because I don't know if you can hear that squirrel. It was right there. So what I've got is... It's a haptic trained dog. So I have done... Because this dog and it, I, the only, uh, everything it is, is me, because it, it's basically had, what you have to say, the majority of its conscious life has been with me. It was a puppy before, and they're not as conscious if you said, well, well I don't know, you know, I, I have a couple memories of different places I lived as a kid, you know but not, certainly not full length memories of anything, a few incidents, you know, so you've got to say that you're, you're not as conscious. It, it, yeah, if you were to go back in a time machine as an adult back to that, you would have completely different perceptions of these situations. All right, so, she might take off down that way. If I, if she does, I'll go the other way. <coughs> oh, she likes to be right by me though. Look at Molly. Well, who knows? Dog treats, everything, all of it, all kinds of stuff. Anything they sell on Amazon. All right, watch, watch. Now, what I'm going to do is wait till then. already see it. Molly's getting ready to go poop right by the gate. She is absolutely awful. So if you said, what did I do? I waited until the option of going forward was no longer there. That's what I did. I have not had her out here for a while, so I was not going to try to spin the dog. But if I wait, and that was the farthest point away the dog could get from me, was all the way to the gate. And if there's only two options, go back or go forward, and you've removed go forward as an option, your confidence rate, again, your confidence rate that this thing's going to come back is a lot higher. I look at her, look at her. All right, watch. So you can see what I'm doing. There is no more option to go. Anybody should be able to do that in your house, even on a smaller scale. If you said, well, what, what would make them? Put someone on the other side of a door. Ring the doorbell. These things are going to be right there. If your plan is to open the door and try to make this thing wait, that hasn't been my experience. That doesn't work. Alright, watch, watch. Oh, she's gone, she's gone. She stopped herself. But I'm saying to myself, she's probably gonna go, that was the tell. She's gonna go down there. Alright, she can't go any farther forward. has to be, you know, I'm limiting the option to 
the successful choice. And, and you know, if you said, well, she needs corrections, oh, she probably does, but look at her. <laughs> She's my little monster. Uh-oh, something scared her. If you said what's good, not a scared great day. All right, so her impulse is gonna just spin back this way anyway. There's the tell, there's the tell. So my job is to let it get a little farther forward and use my pager to cause that spin. That's a very, very important one, Mike, and I know it maybe isn't for more advanced trainers or whatever, but it's, it's bias. It's know your dog's behavior bias or no dog's behavior bias in general. Because a dog like that, oh, she had her hair up and she said, what'd you say? Oh, the box, anything. She's a big chicken liver. And it, if you said, well, are all great. Yes, they're all big chicken livers. The ones that are mean, I guess there is probably, who knows? There's a human, unwritten human code. If they're mean, put them down. If you think there's veterinarians out there saying, <laughs> Save the aggressive. I don't think they are. I don't think they are. So that was a textbook, though. Her impulse, her hair was up. She was facing forward. Any dog with that doing that, their behavior bias is going to be retreat. So you're just making the retreat. You're any port in a storm. You're the port in the storm. Oh, she loves all these, look at all this stuff. She, oh, my treats, my treats, yeah. Yeah, I used to just be able to get one little box, like a quarter of the size for treats, but not anymore, not anymore. All right, you guys, I will be back later. I gotta get this stuff in. I gotta, it was like Christmas. So you can say, and that's a very, very important one. If the dog is at an impasse, you can bias the behavior towards what you want it to be. <laughs> you just what with the opposite, get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it, get it. And charge towards the gate myself. No, she might not be, you know. She probably would stay ahead. Molly would charge ahead. And woo! Big and puffy. Oh, she was... If, if she had long hair, she would have been all puffed up. Ah! Yay. That's a totally cool dog, though. Well, and if you said, what is this dog? Oh, look at her. She sees that food over there. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Look. Oh, her. No, 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 Chelsea. No, 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 Chelsea. Chelsea. No, Chelsea. She's not chewing the box as a misbehaving dog, Chelsea. That's her training, Chelsea. She's bringing the box in. Che yes, Chelsea. That's how they do it. Clearly, you've never seen Amazon training, Chelsea. <laughs> stuff you come up with just tearing up a box out of control dog clearly you don't see her pulling this wagon i understand she's pulling it the wrong way but she's just a dog i know <laughs> i bet you could get her to pull this handle oh, if you said how much is in there a lot I don't like what you're insinuating here, Chelsea, that this dog is not a perfect companion. He is not going to tear into that box if left unsupervised. This is ridiculous. I don't know. I, I don't, you know, I don't know what to think, you know, something about dog shells, but she's not trying to tear into this box. She's opening it for me, Chelsea. She's thoughtful that way. Anyway, what she was saying, though, and I know you understand what I meant. There was a, there was the point. The, oh, look at her. She's moving the whole thing. I bet I could put a rope on here and get her to pull this wagon. Look at her. She's a wreck it, wreck it, well. Look at her. He said, is that making it harder? Oh, no, Chelsea, making it all. Chelsea, she's pushing it. Chelsea, she's helping. I don't... She's so poorly behaved, Chelsea. This is all the training. Clearly, you've been on the chat boards too much. They don't have this there. She's pushing. She's pushing. She's going to jump on you and push again. She's very helpful. Okay, she does. <laughs> see? Chelsea, see? <laughs> all 
right, I gotta go watch some cat videos. I'll be right back.